going to read to you a letter, a legal letter that goes out to Uber and can also go out to Lyft. And you're going to get a lot of important addresses that you might need in the future and a lot of important phone numbers and emails of Uber that you can contact them directly. Because the problem at the moment, and this is rampant, they are just deactivating, deactivating, deactivating drivers. Why are they doing this? Because they are only looking at the rider side. One complaint and you're out, right? A big complaint. It could be a, mostly a false complaint or a complaint from a food delivery uh, order. And you're out there and you're losing money and your stress levels are through the roof. Now, as one of the largest, biggest, I'd say biggest critiques of Uber, and I've only stepped into that role because once you've been screwed over like this guy, once you've been screwed over like myself and thousands of others, you stand up, you rise. Look at what those guys did in the UK a week ago. Two guys took on Uber because they had enough, right? And that's the same DNA that you have to have. You've got to fight back. You've got to say to yourself, you know what? I'll take on this Goliath. I have no problem. I'll step into the David role. And helping, educating, and getting these success, successes is extremely rewarding to me because I made a promise to the Uber attorney, Randall Heimavicki, a while ago. I said, listen, you may take $750,000 of unpaid referrals of my money, but I'm going to cost you $100 million, guaranteed. And to date, if I look at the amount of attorneys that I've, uh, if I look at the amount of drivers that I've funneled into class action lawsuits, the amount of people that filed small claims, the amount of people that have taken Uber on, I've cost them way more than that, right? So uh, this letter goes out to Uber Technologies Incorporated, right? Attention legal department. There you have an address, an important one, 1455 Market Street, San Francisco. You have another important email and address there, CT Corporation System, OBO, Uber Technologies, Inc., 208 South LaSalle Street, Suite 814, Chicago. And you have an important email, insurance, dash legal at Uber, right? Um, and this here had to do with the deactivation of driver Intazar Shah, who I know. Um, that's, that's the email there that they reference, the date, right? And they say, dear Uber Technologies, and this would be a typical response after a law firm has listened to you, after they know um, why you got deactivated. You know, it, it, when you fill in the form and you say they deactivated me for this and this reason, but never ever gave me any proof or just wrongfully terminated you, out goes this type of letter. Our law office has been retained to address the deactivation of Intazar Shah from your rideshare platform. On approximately October 17, 2020, your company restricted Intazar Shah's access to the platform since being hired. Intazar Shah has been a dedicated worker with positive ratings and reviews until the deactivation of approximately October 17, 2020. Uber Technologies Inc. gave no notice, no notice or indication that Intazar Shah's employment status was in peril. Furthermore, Intazar Shah had no opportunity to challenge, contradict or even address the allegations that lead or le that led to the deactivation. So does this, does this language sound familiar, right? You don't even have a chance to contradict their statement, to challenge their statement. No, it's, it's their way or the highway, and you're out, and you're losing money. And that, at that point, you have to put on your gloves and fight, my friends, and that's where I can help you. Put bluntly, the deactivation of Intazar's Shah account violated contract law, labor law, due process, and fundamental fairness, right? So th those are basically the violations that they can sue on if he, wants to if he wants to pursue this and get monetary damages. So they give him an opportunity. They give Uber an opportunity that your company unilaterally deprives its employees of the right to work and earn income with no notice or opportunity for appeal, right? This is also your angle, your argument that you make. You take the same verbiage to small claims court before the judge. And you let the judge know it's unacceptable and actionable offense. Intazar Shah and those similarly situated have rights as individuals 
and as a class? Yes, we do. My client is investigating all potential causes of action due to a pecuniary and emotional losses sustained. That said, I'm writing in the hopes of reaching an amicable and swift resolution. My client is not seeking a monetary settlement at this time. Not yet. Intazar Shah is solely requesting that Uber Technologies Inc. reactivate the account within 14 days of, his co of this correspondence should the account be reactivated and kept active, Intazar Shah will consider this matter resolved. Should your company have a reasonable belief that Intazar Shah is truly a risk to the community, please provide a written explanation to that belief and any evidence in support of. You see, the most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, they cannot offer any evidence. If a rider says while he was swerving, he smelled like alcohol, he looked drunk or he looked high, well, deactivate it. Where's the proof? Where's the drug test? Where's the alcohol test? As you will see, they never have it. They can't provide it. That is why you have to force this case, this type of situation, this type of deactivation into this scenario so that they put on notice. They have 14 days to respond. If they do not activate you, the next step straight to small claims court or straight to an attorney or a law firm. Here he says, I look forward to your written response. Very truly yours, Brian Greening. I've had Brian Greening on my show. He is an honorable, amazing an attorney that fights for the rideshare community, for the gig community. The link below, legalrideshare.com forward slash deactivation. That allows you to formulate this type of letter that goes out, right? They are then put on legal notice. Now, you've got a lot of good information in this letter. If you write it, it does not have the same value as an attorney. And for $25, for $25, this is, this is a $350 letter, my friends. I've hired many attorneys. They'll charge you $350, $400. They're charging you $25 only for this, for this letter. Now, in those next 14 days, company will... Legal rights, you will contact you and say, "Hey, you know what? They're willing to deact. They're willing to activate you, or they stand their ground, right? That after, if they stand their ground and they let the deactivation stand, you then have to make up your mind: Do I put on my gloves and do I duke it out with these people and drag them right into small claims court? The answer is yes, right? You do not tolerate a one-sided opinion. Your opinion here, your side counts. That's why I made this video, right? So let's stand together because together we are strong. Let's educate together. Let's get this video out to other drivers, rooms, etc., Facebook, Twitter, so we can show drivers and gig workers that they do have two legs to stand on and that they're not alone and that they can fight back and that they can get activated again and that they can get the damages and the losses of their earnings, right? Because they deserve it. So I appreciate your time. Stay safe out there. Um, I'm, I'm helping into Zasha at the moment. And the next steps are going to be small claims uh, cases. And the next steps are going to be showing him how to use social media. You have to turn to social media and out these fools and expose the Dara Koshrashawis of the world, the Logan Greens, the John Zimmers. You have to hold up the mirror to them and say, no, not with me, folks, okay? So please, uh, don't just kick back, accept your deactivation and move on. Fight back. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.